Hey you Vision fans, Celia Capsis is representing Cyprus this year with her song Liar. I'm going to listen back to the music video and see what he's lying about and give my analysis of the song and the lyrics. Then we'll talk about Cyprus's place in the contest by looking at their 10 year record and their qualification record. Then we'll see if this can qualify from semi-final number one and what it could do if it makes the final. So uh, let's kiki. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So a little bit late with this video. <laughs> I've been so behind on my videos this year. I I'm going to try and make them all a bit shorter so I can catch up a little bit. But yeah, Sally Capsis is representing Cyprus this year. She's originally from Sydney. I believe she was 16 when she was announced, but she's 17 years old now. Amazing dancer. She's got incredible popping skills. So yeah, Cyprus going for quite a young artist this year, which is something that Greece tried last year and it didn't go perfectly. Let's see if Cyprus can have more success. It's written by Dimitris Kontopoulos and I believe that this song was originally rejected by Azerbaijan I think two years ago and then last year it was in the Greek national final it came second technically second let's not go there and now it's had another revamp and it's come into its final form with Cyprus so yeah this does actually happen behind the scenes we get lots of songs that are passed around year after year and they have revamps and they get redone until they eventually get chosen or they go to the song graveyard. <laughs> this song isn't going to the graveyard. It's going straight into the Eurovision semi-finals. I'm going to be reacting to the music video today. I'm not sure if she's with Panic Records or not. It looks like she's not, but still I expect to have absolutely horrendous copyright with the Cypriot song. I will do my best to keep as much as I can, but I'm going to have to obscure the visuals and the audio. If you want to see the originals, I'll put it up on my Patreon. I have to put my headphones in, don't I? Otherwise I can't hear the song. This is, am I going to get a bop on? <laughs> Okay, this is Silly Capsa singing Liar, one and a secret bang. I'm gonna have an epiphany about this song. It's gonna lead me to my new life. Ooh! Ooh! Quite a dramatic beginning. I love this posing that they're doing. She's waking up in the morning and she's feeling ooh la la, yes! Lyrical death. I like it though, it's kinda of got like it is bubblegum. I like having bubblegum pop. That's a lovely beat. Really thick. Yeah, really great beat. Really thick. Very nice. She doesn't even dance yet. I'm expecting she's gonna be a big dancer on the stage. And some nice kind of like vocal moments here. Hmm. Yeah, this is a solid bop. Oh, I like this like slight change up in the chorus. Yeah, really nice thick production, Rolly Britney Spears, very 90s pop, I like it. Yeah, the production's good. I can see they've taken a song that was maybe a bit ordinary and elevated it with some nice thumpy beats and whatnot. Yeah, it's not like, the, it's not like a massive hook. It's a nice vibe and it's got energy. Like I'm gonna download this, but it's, it hasn't got like a crazy good hook. I wouldn't know they're gonna kind of mix things up towards the end just to surprise us a little bit. Not really showing us too much dancing in the music video. Maybe they're holding the cards close to their chest. Okay, bit of a mix up here. What are they gonna do? Are they gonna surprise me? Not too surprising. It's okay. It's expected, solid. Okay, this is definitely a dance break. <laughs> I don't know why that took so long to register. Nice, I nice that there's some vocal moments as well. Show off her voice. Mm. Giving a bit of L for the loser, the loser liar. That's fine. Like one of my first impressions, it is bubblegum. It is very kind of like 90s style pop, like Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, just that kind of like thumpy, switch your brain off, don't think too much, singing about how a boy is trash. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I enjoy that type of music. I don't want everything to, everything to be serious. It's great to have these moments that are a little bit more fun, escapism, forget your problems. But yeah, it doesn't have like a super strong melody to it. I think it's pretty decent. Like I had a bit of a bop on from quite early because that thick beat came in and was there for pretty much most of the song. And I enjoyed that beat, but it didn't really evolve massively. I was hoping there'd be maybe something that caught me off guard that was surprising or different, but it is a very, very standard progression of the song. Like it is pure 90s girly pop bop. 
And again, nothing wrong with that, but I do think it would be quite good to subvert our expectations a little bit. So yeah, I would have just liked something with a little bit more edge in it. But yeah, this is Cyprus very much going down something that's comfortable for them. So this is similar to Replay. It's similar to Fuego. Yeah, first impressions music video was kind of cool. It had a playful theme to it. This guy who's cheating, lying on several women. Not as much dancing as I expected. So maybe they're keeping the choreography a secret because she is like, I think she's a dance champion. She's very, very, very good technically at dance. She's still quite young. So obviously lacking just a little bit of experience, but she has got some really, really good kind of popping ability. She's quite aggressive in her dancing style. Every time I've seen her dance, I'm always impressed, but I do look at her and I do see quite a young dancer in that she still hasn't refined her own like personal style in how she pops and whatnot. It's skilled, but you can see that she's kind of young in her career. Look, overall, I thought that was fun. It was what we all expected. This is not surprising. Okay, <laughs> are we gonna go in for a lyrical analysis? Let's go in for a quick thing and just see if we can find anything that's kind of cute or fun. I have to admit, when I, when I have my like bubblegum pop songs, I like them to have a cute theme or metaphor. So for example, one of my favorite bubblegum songs is E.T. by Katy Perry. I love that. I love all the space imagery and the alien wordplay and the music video has this incredible colors and fashion. So that's how I love my girly bops. Uh, another example, I love Criminal by Britney Spears. That's less of a bop, but you know, kind of like pop. Um, I love that, the theming of being with this bad boy and all these kind of criminal metaphors. So I like when it has a strong thing. Let's see if we can pick out how many lying metaphors did she manage to get into the song? Waking up in the morning and I'm feeling like, oh, la, 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 that is a, that's a quality line. That's no notes whatsoever. It's about to go down because I found out the truth, la, la, at nine o'clock in the morning and I know this is our last night. I know what I'm doing because, yeah, I got it in black and white. Should have known that you were a liar, but I looked the other way. Should have known you're a troublemaker, but you act too nice to hate. I knew we couldn't get much higher, but you promised the world to me. Do you see that you light my fire? Ooh, that kind of feels... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even doesn't even seem to make sense in the rest of the verse. Now I know what I know. I have to admit, I am kind of getting a vibe that she can't contribute to these lyrics because they do sound like it's a young voice. So <clears throat> it feels age appropriate. Uh, it doesn't feel like, like people are forcing something that she wouldn't say onto her. Because of you, I'll make it through. Take a look at yourself because that's what you need to do to do because the cause of the problem in this room is about you, about you. Uh, waking up in the morning, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like, oh la la, now I know that your heart and your mind don't align. I can see it in your eyes that you don't like to be this way. I know that you're fighting back. Guys like you can can't be chained. Yeah, look, Lexi, it's fine. I don't know, I would prefer like a couple more playful, fun metaphors. I don't feel like there's too many sentences in the song which are like fun to say. I think with these songs, you wanna be in the club and you wanna be like, you're a liar, pants on fire. <laughs> <laughs> not that that's very lame but you know what i mean you want to have like these fun things to say like katie perry i kissed a girl it's fun to be in the club and be like i kissed a girl and i like you can have these songs that don't have meaning but they've got fun phrases things that are catchy and memorable and can come a little bit viral you know other than the first sentence you know wake up in the morning and i'm feeling like ooh la la i feel like that's unintentionally kind of epic i feel like it's memeable but not it's not intended to do so it's <laughs> Slightly cringe lyric, fine. Look, at the end of the day, the, the purpose of the song is escapism. The lyrics are fine. Let's talk a little bit about the staging. What's gonna happen? I think it's gonna be largely like the music video. I think she's gonna be wearing something very bright and shiny. I think she's wearing a gold outfit for most of that music video. There's gonna be a dance break. I'm not sure why it took me so long <laughs> to catch on. I think I just zoned out for a little bit and then I woke up and I was like, oh, we're in the dance break section. So yeah, they purposely put that in because they know that's one of her strengths. And I think that's one of the things that she's gonna be looking forward to the most is showing off her dance skills. I, I do hope that they can just kind of like refine her a little bit like i said every single time i've seen her dancing it's very aggressive and i know that she's a popper but sometimes it almost looks like she's crumping which is like a very in your face dancing style which is totally legitimate as a style but i think to a lot of european audiences they're not gonna understand like that very crumpy style of popping getting something that's a little bit slower a little bit less hard hitting still showing off her technical skills but yeah her dance style for me is not super enjoyable to watch out i think that she's still quite a young artist and she's going to get better and better so i think it'd be great if someone just like works with her hones her in have these kind of frantic moments because she does come across a little bit frantic sometimes when she's dancing but then also have camera moments which are a bit more smooth alternating between high and low energy something that i think a really good dancer has but yeah i'm definitely excited to see what they're going to do for the dance break oh, they've got some really cool visuals i'm feeling that, like this is kind of in the same vein as blanca last year for poland so maybe we'll get some beach theme or we'll get some sort of like tropical i think just go really colorful go for like palm leaves and maybe give us like a miami vibe 
let's give us like nice bright colors, blues and greens and everything. I think it goes without saying this is gonna have five dancers or something like that. I think that they're gonna be going for age appropriate as well. I think the staging, for example, for Replay and Diablo was a little bit older. There was a little bit more of a sex element in it. You know, Tamta had the cowboy dancers. Uh, Diablo, there was a lot of skin showing. I think this is gonna be a little bit more youth orientated. It's gonna be going for a cooler feel. I think she'll have young dancers. I think they'll all be maybe having their own personal style as opposed to in those other videos where they're all dressed the same. I think this, there'll be like a bit more variation. So it feels like a group of kids who are coming together to dance and have fun and talk about how this guy is a piece of crap and they're kicking him out. I hope it's age appropriate because she is 17. So I hope they're not putting her into something that isn't her or feels uncomfortable. High energy, fun, buzzy, happy, joyful. Maybe give us a moment. This is such a strong semi-final. They're in the first half. Maybe there needs to be something a little bit wow. I mean more than pyro. I mean like something clever. Can they build something into the staging that kind of surprises us again? So before we talk about how this can do in Eurovision, let's talk about Cyprus in the contest. And if we look at the results in the last 10 years, they are currently ranked 18th, which is incredibly impressive when you consider that Cyprus has 1.2 million people. So to be in such a small country and have such great results, you know, you've got less resources, you've got less songwriters, you get less artists to tap into, you just got a little bit less of everything. And to still be 18th in the rankings is really great. They took that gap year in 2014 and then came back in 2015 and then for those three years they used artists from the same national final. I think it was the national final was in 2015 and they used three of the artists for 15, 16 and 17. 18 of course they had Fuego with Eleni Ferrer. Really really amazing song like very iconic. Cyprus's best ever results are really great for them and then since then kind of getting a little bit into this girly bop format. This seems to be their default format now. Their kind of identity in the song is these summery, carefree, boppy songs, not very deep in terms of meaning or lyrical intensity. They tend to be quite good looking artists. And then they're boppy and they're carefree and they're fun mostly. So yeah, Cypress a little bit one note, but again, with the constraints on their resources and people, I'm not surprised that they kind of just need to find something that works if they want to kind of qualify decently. Uh, I don't think it's particularly a formula that's going to get them a win anytime soon. I think Fuego was that chance and then they've kind of used it up and really they're going to have to reinvent and do something new if they want to. Maybe they don't give a crap about winning. Maybe they just want to qualify and they've qualified seven of the last eight years, which is crazy. There's countries who have way, way, way more money who can qualify or wouldn't qualify if they were in the semis. So yeah, they do a great job. I'm not hating on the Cypriot delegation. I think they work within their means. Last year, Ambru Andrew Lambrew, again, sending a handsome man with a kind of like throwaway lyric, fun boppy song, I enjoyed it. The staging was kind of cool. Feels like they're kind of going for a slightly Swedish feel in their production and their staging concepts. Okay, so do I think this is gonna qualify? Well, this is in the first half of the first semi-final. This is in the most difficult quarter, in my opinion. I'm very sure that this is gonna open the show. Is for many reasons, it's the obvious one. It's in English. It's gonna be age appropriate because it has to be because she's 17. You know, they can't be putting her over sexual. So they want something that's family friendly to start the show off because there are more kids watching. They don't wanna start with a big country that is potentially gonna have a huge audience. But yeah, it is the perfect opener. It's upbeat, it's fun. It's got a chance to qualify, but it's not a big, big favorite because you want your favorites a little bit later in the show, but you wanna start the show with a big bang. I think that the staging is gonna be high energy. It's gonna have the dance break. Hopefully there's gonna be some sort of big surprise in it. It's just the most obvious opener. You know, Croatia, I, I don't know. I think opening with a rock song would be something new. Uh, Bambi is just too eclectic. Sylvester's another possibility, maybe with Lithuania, but again, that song is not in English. I think it might be a little bit too niche, so that would be, it is a possibility. Luna, I don't think so because of the population. Serbia is not appropriate and Ukraine is not appropriate to open the show either. So it does feel like it would be between Cyprus, Poland and Lithuania. I think Cyprus is like really the obvious one. Only thing against that is Cyprus do open a lot. I think Replay opened, Tamta definitely opened something. Yeah, Cyprus seem to get drawn a lot. At the end of the day, if you are sending these kind of like mid, pretty decent girl bop, you're gonna get first a lot because it fits the criteria of family friendly, familiar, in English, upbeat, dancey, not too good. So at the end of the day, they're kind of fulfilling the criteria of the opening song every single year. So I think that's why they keep putting in the first slot. To come to my question, do I think this will qualify? I think it's gonna to be tough from that very first slot. I think you open up with Cyprus, and again, it's something that's quite familiar, and then you have 14 songs 
many of which have a very, very strong, unique identity. And I think that people are just gonna possibly forget about this. There's no Greece to help either. I really do feel like Cyprus would benefit from Greece's aid this year. All those previous qualifications didn't need Greece. If you take away Greece's points, Cyprus still qualified seven of the last eight years. I think this year they need that, twin, that 12 point. Yeah, I just think that the semi-final is very strong. If they want to qualify, they need to bring a wow moment that we don't know about currently. The song is good, definitely decent enough to qualify in eighth, ninth, tenth in the semi. But I feel like if there's other countries who are also competing and if they bring something big, I think Cyprus is out. So yeah, definitely a borderline for me at this point. And if it does qualify, what do I think this will do in the final? Well, jury wise, I think this will be kind of like down in the bottom third. I don't really think that this is the type of thing. I don't think jurors will like bomb this or anything, but yeah, it's just there's a lot more songs that have a bit more lyrical depth and a bit more vocal things going on. And, you know, if it looks super professional and the choreography looks amazing and it looks super organized, like it's a really super professional concert, that can do better with the jury. I would be surprised if someone who's 17 year, years old has that level of command on the stage. I would expect that there's gonna be a few more, like, you know, everyone's gonna get better with, as they get older. She's 17, she's definitely gonna be a better dancer performer when she's 22. In terms of the televote, Again, I'm thinking bottom third. Like if I think that this makes the final, it's pretty much guaranteed to be down the bottom half of the right side of the scoreboard. Uh, I don't really see this going super high unless there's some information that I'm not aware of in terms of a big staging extravaganza that's gonna happen. You know, one possibility is that this is just something very different. Uh, if we have a lot of more serious, crazy songs in the final and then this is familiar, that could actually be its secret weapon is that it's kind of normal. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows, but yeah, with current information, I'm thinking bottom third, bottom third, if it makes through the final. I, I'm, I'd say they're rehearsing their asses off right now, so I definitely wish them luck. I hope that she's a really good show. I felt last year that Victor Vernikos, possibly, I think the whole thing didn't massively work. Even if she doesn't qualify, I want her to come out the other side and say this was a positive experience, I had fun, and look at it as the start of her career. So do I think this can win? No, I don't think this can win. I don't think this is a contender for any of top 10 in Televoted or top 10 on the jury at this point in time. Whereas in the odds, it's 23rd. Um, but yeah, new, new stuff can come to light. Who knows? They can absolutely, have it. I'm saying absolute no. I just can't see it currently in this moment in time. But yeah, new information comes to light or they do something very different or they come with a big rehearsal. Who knows? It could catch fire, but I'm not feeling the fire right now. I'm not a fire liar. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna lie to you about how we think Cyprus will do. And finally, let's have a look at the community and we see that this is currently in 18th. So yeah, we know that on the Eurovision scoreboard, people like female artists and girly bops. So yeah, possibly a little bit over elevated because of that. But yeah, let's wait and see. Okay, that's what I thought about Silly Caps of Seeing Liar. What did you think? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. No new donations on Buy Me Coffee and PayPal, but you can support the channel down below if you want. I'll leave links in the description. I am a full-time content creator. And of course, thank you to my patrons all over the world for patronizing my channel. On my Patreon, you get the original audio and visuals when I get copyrighted in videos like this. You can also get some earlier releases, behind the scenes updates, and you can be part of our My Eurovision Scoreboard group so go check that out if you're a fan. But of course, thank you so much just for watching and maybe leaving a like and maybe sharing the video. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.